Again, just to remind you, I don't read every comic book. In fact, I don't read a lot of comic books. All my knowledge regarding the DC Universe is from movies, TV shows, animated projects, and any other on-screen projects. Adaptation means changes, and as long as the changes make the adapted story better, they are always welcome. Alright, let's begin, shall we? I can't wait to talk about this film! Before I start... Yes! Yes. Okay, before I get real, just to let you know if you are a DC fan, regardless of the film's quality, no matter if you think the film is underwhelming or just as you expected, this is literally a DC fan's wet dream. Finally seeing all your favorite DC characters appearing in a movie, some are the new generation ones, some from the old days, a lot from the old days actually, and even those that never get to see the light and days and we can only read and watch about stories of how they are not made. Yeah, we got those as well. Literally, I mean, literally everything you can think of. Even those what you so called fan service, yeah, all of it played a part in this story. But one thing that bugs me is even those that never get to see the light and day, you can get the exact actor, the exact script play out on the big screen while Henry Cavill, Man of Steel, can't even show his face for one second. Are you f***ing kidding me? That's just show how scared you are regarding the amazingness, if that's a word, of the Snyderverse Warner Bros. This is probably the most facial expression changes I've ever had in a theater. Normally I try to stay calm and enjoy the movie to see if it's good or bad. But this movie makes me not to think or care and just have my pen covering my mouth the whole time because I'm just fanboying out for everything in this movie. I haven't felt this way for god knows how long and I love it. Now let's get real. Let's start with the story. If you know the Flashpoint storyline, you kinda know what is the general idea of the movie. If you don't, this movie is gonna blow your mind away. I know the story and the script still find ways to make it fresh and interesting and unexpected but still makes sense all the way for me. Like just makes sense. Barry's story is pretty predictable even if you don't know the storyline but the film did a very good job on telling that story and in the end, his growth and resolution did make me feel sorry for the guy and proud of his decision. There are a lot of characters in the film but I'm just gonna talk about the main ones. Barry. The current timeline Barry, the main Barry, the one that goes through all the Snyder Cut, his story is the heart and soul of the movie that slowly affects the other characters. His story is the most important one and I think it absolutely did the job just fine. The film sets out his current situation very competently to showcase his unfulfilled life and just needed that piece to be complete. And that opportunity occurs, he struggles before finally deciding to risk it, which leads to all the events in the film. I don't think the story plays out perfectly, it did get a little bit messy and superficial during the middle for a while before picking right back up. But those are not affecting the main core story of Barry learning to let go. The new timeline Barry, the one with the long messy hair Barry, his story is actually more interesting after finishing the film. It actually plays out right in front of our eyes the whole time and I didn't see it. I can even say that the movie is an origin story for him. His transformation is very interesting but the movie handled it as a second fiddle to the current Barry storyline which I think is a giant waste. I know current Barry story is the heart and soul but they don't have to do what they did with the messy hair berries at the end. And his ending kinda does not mean anything to current Barry at all. After they all ends, messy hair Barry is like never exist before. Current Barry doesn't even think or talk about him anymore. Like why? He went from a good transformation to a god tier character potential to being wasted and forgotten. What a shame. Batman. Now there's two main Batman in the film. Batflag, FYI still waiting for the Snyderverse to restore, is the one to set up Barry's unfulfilled life at the very beginning and Michael Keaton's Batman is the one who goes along with the journey and plays a major role in current Barry's growth. His story starts kinda unexplained, just a few lines to cover it up but it does have a very noticeable change in character of how the old and give it all our Batman get inspired and rekindles that fire by current Barry. That is a nice touch. He is also the one that helps current Barry understand the most important realization. So kind of a mentor role and Michael Keaton absolutely kills it again. No matter what you hear about Michael Keaton being absolutely amazing which he is, 
The MVP is definitely Ezra Miller. He carried this film hard. Both berries are perfection, and there are more of berries, which is great as well. The movie can't be anything without his performance. Supergirl. Out of the four main characters, she's got the least screen time, and kind of sad that her story is the weakest one as well, and the most messy one. Not gonna get into the whole she is Lara Lenke, not Kara Zor El thing. Let's just accept that she is Kara Zor El for this video's sake, which she is not. Her story is so on the surface level. Like Barry is just, oh, we have to help her because she needs help. Let's save her. But it kind of gets interesting when she logically decides to leave. But then after seeing Zod kills a human, she comes back and then asks, "Why did you help me? Because you need help. Well, I guess you're not all bad. I'll help you." Like the stuff is not great, but it's not bad. Just the pacing of the second act is so fast that they sacrifice a lot of a story and give those screen time towards the other parts of the story, which is the biggest issue I have with the film. The film is over two and a half hours, which is already a long movie. But I feel like they need another 15 minutes or so to make their story more detailed and deeper, especially the second act. The rescue mission leading towards the huge war. The entire process happened so fast that everything was just touch and go. Nothing sticks, and everything is so superficial. The messy hair Barry learning the truth by literally accident, which is a critical part of his story. By the way, current Barry regains his power, supposed to be a huge challenge, but it just sort of happened without any major difficulties because of impeccable timing. Supergirl went from hating humans to feel sorry for them and decides to help them in like not even five minutes. Only Keaton Batman is kind of unaffected by this rushed second act. He got a very Casino Royale-ish scene in the bathroom, which is a major plot point for his story. The movie should be a three-hour one, but it just rushed through a little bit too fast in the middle and led to some undesirable outcomes. A very detailed part of the film is its respect for the universe. At first, it was just an acknowledgement that Snyder Cut. Is the true predecessor. As it gets better and better, all the DC produced and shelved projects appeared aside from the Dark Knight trilogy and Superman Returns. We all know how that's not gonna happen. But the thing that got me hyped and happy is how the film stays true to Man of Steel, my favorite superhero movie, by the way. Well, maybe it's the Flash now, but that's not the point. The point is, it did not change a single thing from that movie to fit this story into it. On the contrary, this movie basically keeps everything the same, which in terms make Man of Steel more precious. The biggest example is the power level of Zod. I was kind of worried because now she is facing Supergirl, a Latina Supergirl in Hollywood, which usually means Michael Shannon is about to get squashed. But thank God the movie continues to keep Michael Shannon's Zod intact. He not only did it get beaten, he won over and over again. I mean, it just makes sense. Superman first day walking have to go through billions of lives and snapping a neck. It would be pretty ridiculous that a girl who just got her power ten minutes ago is gonna beat him. Don't start with the fact that Supergirl is more powerful than Superman stuff. I'm talking about this film, this story. If you want to talk about lore accuracy, I'll tell you this is Lara Lang Ken, and we need to talk about this. Spoiler alert. Skip this part if you don't want any spoilers. Superman lives, baby. My God, we've heard so much story about how long hair Nick Cage Superman fights a giant spider, and we got it. And Christopher Reeve, man, always feels good to see him in the suit. He is still the best Superman in my mind. His version of Supergirl, just whatever. Like why? Even the Supergirl, like the Supergirl movie, Supergirl. Is in this film, but Henry Cavill cannot show his face for one second. Are you freaking kidding me? Surprisingly, the film is actually pretty funny. Not like language comedy. People just talking about nonsense at an off timing to generate comedy. I mean, like actual physical comedy. I laughed a few times in the theater, and those comedy aspect really surprises me. Action, action, action! Most of the actions are really well done. If you can set aside the visual effects, those are not bad, but not really blowing my mind either. Like when you look at it, you know it's fake, but it's just like whatever. The effect is at the level where you know it's CGI, but it's not bad to a point of unwatchable. Just alright. 
it can be better, a lot better, but I'm not gonna complain. Lots of interesting and fun ideas for every fight scene actually, and they always find a way to make the action more dramatic and tense by giving you the dilemma of how to solve multiple issues at once, or showcasing someone's power, relieving the bat flag beating goons, but this time it's Michael Keaton Batman which is so out of this world, I was like, really? I mean, it looks great and all, but it's just... Keaton Batman at 70, he's fighting like bad flag, one punch is gonna kill a guy, come on. How Batman can still f***ing beat a Kryptonian in an awesome sequences that makes sense. All of them are great, just some in the middle are kinda pointless other than having a fight, mainly Batman beating up the Russians. Other than fan service, I don't know why they need to do that, but the fight is very well done. And there are a lot of cuts, but the camera is always staying still, so everything still looks clear and obvious. A very good time watching the action. I gotta say, the battlefield is a little bit too boring, like it is just a plan, sand, ground, that's it. Nothing else. I know it's the place that they first meet the soldier in Man of Steel, but come on. A mountain? A giant rock or something? No? Just a big plain field of sand? Like, come on. The film is not perfect. The second act is definitely the black ship, but other than that, everything else is very well done and can be even better if there's more screen time and let the second act play it out better. Very well acted, great action, great story, great characters, fan service done right. A little bit. Like, it has a story that connects everything together, and the story doesn't crumble as the fan service stack on each other. So it's just decent, and it respects the previous film and the lore. Obviously, this one is not as good as Across the Spider-Verse, not even close, that movie is already in god-tier status. If you haven't seen my videos on that, please go watch it if you have the time, but this one is still a very good one, definitely check it out if you love DC, if you don't, maybe this one will convince you to join us in the DC fandom. Across the Spider-Verse, to now The Flash. What a great period for superhero movies, MCU continues to bounce back or DCU or whatever it is called now, still has dark clouds covering their skies. This movie makes me want the Snyderverse to be restored even more. Now that the multiverse is a thing, it is obviously doable unless someone is trying to prevent that from happening. Whatever it is, it was a tragedy what happened and now I can only hope that DC can bounce back and continue to dominate the genre and be the granddaddy of superheroes, especially Man of Steel. Come on, Henry Cavill, he's the perfect modern day Superman. Nick Cage, Supergirl, like the old Christopher Reeve universe Supergirl, like that Gale can appear. You can't even put Henry Cavill's face on the screen, really? And I still want Man of Steel too, please. Move along.